not worthy Yet you come to live in me So speak your word of comfort By your touch strengthen Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Today we join the members of Opus Dei as they thank God for their founder on the feast day of their founder, Saint Hosea Maria Escriva. Saint Hosea Maria Escriva was a Spanish priest who founded an organization in the church called Op Opus Dei to help people live the universal call to holiness. He emphasized that through one's daily work, one comes in contact with God and is sanctified. Saint Josea Maria Escriva died on the 26th of June in 1975, and he was canonized in the year 2002 by Pope John Paul II. We thank God for St. Jose Maria Escriva's witness to Christ and for his reminder to each one of us that each one of us is called to holiness. As we come to this Eucharist, we encounter God who is all holy. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have sent the power of the gospel like leaven into the world, grant that your faithful whom you have called to live amid the world and its affairs, may be fervent with the Christian spirit, and through the tasks they carry out in this present age, may constantly build up your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, O Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be bought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree while I bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah and said, Quick, three measures of fine flour, 
knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to a young man who prepared it quickly. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, She is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years. The way of women had ceased to be with Sarah. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time I will return to you about this time next year, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, No, but you did laugh. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Your response is, The Lord has remembered his mercy together. The Lord has remembered his mercy. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Your response? The Lord has remembered his mercy. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. Your response? The Lord has remembered his mercy, and his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. Your response? The Lord has remembered his mercy. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. Your response? The Lord has remembered his mercy. Kindly stand as we prepare our hearts for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ took our illnesses and bore our diseases. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, truly, I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and recline at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. And when Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her. And she rose and began to serve him. That evening they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
The first reading from the book of Genesis tells us of God's visit to Abraham and the good news that God gives Abraham. God appears as three men whom Abraham extends hospitality to. The passage tells us that God is near to us and yet his presence is mysterious. He comes in ways we least expect. Today may we feel God's presence and nearness to us and also be open to the surprises that God has in store for us. The gospel passage from Matthew tells us of the pain and the suffering of the people, but also of the presence of the Messiah that brings healing. Jesus sets free many who were entrapped in evil. He heals with a personal touch, as in the case of Peter's mother-in-law. He responds to all pleas, even those of the Gentiles, as in the case of the centurion. Matthew gives us some of the characteristics of this centurion. Firstly, he was a person concerned about others. Slaves or servants at that time had no value in society, and yet this centurion was concerned and cared for the health of his servant. Secondly, the centurion was humble. He did not consider him worthy to trouble Jesus to come to his house and heal his servant. He was a person of authority himself, as he tells us, but he recognizes that Jesus' authority is far greater than his. In his humility, he surrenders to Jesus. And thirdly, he was a person of faith. He believes in Jesus' power to heal and to save. And Jesus acknowledges his great faith. He was able to believe in the Lord as his savior. At every Eucharist, just before communion, and even today before spiritual communion, you will use the words of the centurion. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May we grow in humility, in concern, in faith, like the centurion in the gospel. And today may we experience the Lord's nearness to us as we carry out our daily activities of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who willed to save the whole world by the sacrifice of your Son, grant through the, through the power of this oblation that your servants living in the lay state, whom you do not cease to call to the apostolate, may imbue the world with the spirit of Christ and be the leaven of its sanctification. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Oswald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
through him and with him and in him O God Almighty Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever Amen, Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for, for the, the kingdom, kingdom the power and the glory, and the glory are yours, yours now, now and, forever. and forever lord jesus christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever amen, amen. the peace of the lord be with you always and, and with, with your spirit, spirit. let us offer each other the sign of peace lamb of god you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world grant us peace Behold the lamb of God behold him who takes away the sins of the world blessed are those called to the supper of the lamb lord i am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness. in the fullness of your power in the communion of your mysteries in the perfection of your ways o divine guest give to my soul a strong lively faith an unbounded trust perfect humility an abiding sorrow for my sins a total abandonment to your divine will and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart O sacrament most holy O sacrament divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine Lord Jesus thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion Let us pray As we draw upon the fullness of your grace we pray O Lord that your faithful who by your will are engaged in the things of this world may be strengthened by the power of the eucharistic banquet to be tireless witnesses to the truth of the gospel and may ever make your church present and active amid the affairs of this age through Christ our Lord Amen, Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. spirit. And may almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.
glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic and be available to all. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.